Welcome to Marketplace Network. Of course, I'll be your host. I'm co-founder along with Bishop Dominic. I'm Dr. Ken. I've got a special guest today. Doers of the Word is the name of the program. It's my dear friend, Bishop Gibbons. Thank you, Bishop, for showing up. I want to give you 30 good minutes. And this is sound teaching. I I just picture him as like a Nathan, like a Glad that it was the King David. I'll tell you this. As he travels around the world, this is the word for him today, that kings will come to him and have an opportunity to speak into their lives that change their direction of their character, their um, knowing of who Christ is, but more importantly, how to give a better uh, way and understanding of how to lead the people the way God wants them to lead. This is the calling on this young man's life. I encourage you to get a pencil and paper because in a few minutes, uh, we're going to turn the set over to him and he's going to be doing this every single month. You can see it live and I encourage you to watch it every month. He'll be on our album 1230 Pacific time. So make sure you take a look at that. But more importantly, he prays for the sick. And if all those that have ailments, I want you to stay tuned. Don't tune out because at the end, I know he's got a word for you. So stay with me. I'll be right back. Praise the Lord, and God bless each and every one of you. Welcome to the Doers of the Word ministry broadcast. My name is Bishop Reginald Gibbons, Sr. I am the senior pastor of the Word of Truth Community Worship Center. We're located at 3325 East Artesia Boulevard in the city of Long Beach. And I am excited. This is our inaugural broadcast today. And I believe that God has a word to share with you on today. Praise God. I, I, I want to start off my message today by expressing just how much God cares for his creation of mankind. And the reason why I want to share that is because I just feel in my spirit that there is somebody listening today that needs to be reassured that God really does care. You're going through a situation, a crisis, you're dealing with with a sickness, you're dealing with a court case, and you're asking yourself, where is God? Well, God is right there with you. His promise is never to leave you, nor to forsake you. He'll be with you always, even to the end. And so that's the kind of God that we serve. God is so great and so magnificent. He, he chose to make man in his image, which is literally a representative figure of his likeness. And then he gave man dominion, which is the ability and the authority to reign and to prevail over everything that God created. And that's according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And I believe that the most appropriate of all scriptures that addresses inclusively God's care for all of mankind is found in one of the most famous, most familiar scriptures in all the script in all the Bible, and that is John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And because of that one act, because of what God did, how he loved us, and because of how he gave his only son, because of that, anyone can come to God. Anyone of any persuasion, anyone of any nationality, it doesn't matter what condition you might be in at this present time. Anyone can come to God and receive God's gift of eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. I wanna read a scripture to you in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse nine, and I'm gonna be reading from the Message Bible. It says, God isn't late with his promise as some measured lateness. He is restraining himself on account of you, holding back the end because he doesn't want anyone to be lost. He's giving everyone space and he's given us time to change. You see, because the whole purpose for your life that God has after you come to Christ is to change you from sinner to saint. 
Not only that, but he wants to restore your fellowship with God and give you access into his kingdom for all eternity. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. In other words, the old way of living has been done away with, and we're not to go and resurrect it and allow it to coexist with the new way of living that has now come into existence. And then, for those who are called and chosen to be numbered as a member of the body of Christ, here's something else that God does to demonstrate his care. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, it tells us, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, I'm not here to wag my own tail or to brag, but I, I say this in all humility. I believe that I am that kind of pastor. And if you're watching this broadcast today, I also believe that you are in the right place. Now, what God wants me to do today in particular is to help give you some clarity on the fact that there are some things that God cannot and will not do in your life. And I know it does sound rather strange to be preaching a message about the things that God cannot do, uh, especially since uh, I am the same pastor that has been drilling into my congregation uh, week after week the characteristics of God. I teach them the omniscience of God, which means that God knows all things. I teach them about the omnipresence of God, is that God is everywhere at all times. I teach that God is immutable, that he is the same and he changes not. But I also let them know of his omnipotence, which means that God has all power. Amen. And in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 26 to 27, it says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord. I am the God of all flesh. And he asked the eternal question, is there anything too hard for me? You know, God was asking that as if to say, how dare anyone think of such a thing? There's nothing too hard for God. And no, I'm not, I'm not changing up anything that I've previously taught. What I'm doing, I'm just fulfilling Jeremiah 3.15 by adding to your knowledge and to your understanding. You see, the things that God cannot do are not a negative by any means. Everything that God does is for the benefit of his creation, which keeps everybody in the wind column. So let me start off by saying this. Number one, the first thing that God cannot do is that he cannot love us any more than what he already does. Amen. Jeremiah 31 and 3 tells us, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. This is the kind of love that, that God has, the kind of love that endures indefinitely, the kind of love that it is, it is nonstop, it is continuous, it is permanent and it will not change. You know, what we got to stop doing, we got to stop trying to make God love us more by doing good works. You see, some people tend to think that the more good works I do, the more God will love me. Well, that's not, that's not true. We don't do good works to make God love us more. We do good works because of the love God already has for us. Amen. The second thing that God cannot do is that God cannot love us any less than what he already does right now. You see, I know I'm talking to somebody because I don't care what you have thought in this life. 
I don't care what you have said in this life, and I really don't care what you have done in this life. None of that will ever make God change his mind or withdraw his love from any of us forever. Amen. First John chapter four, verses nine through 11 says this. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He concludes by saying this, beloved, and he's speaking to you and I. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. The third thing, and this is, this is the, 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 the strongest point that I want to drive home to you today. The third thing that God cannot do is God cannot lie. Amen. God cannot lie. In Titus chapter 1, verse 2, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Now, it's not merely the fact that God has declared that he will not lie. It goes way beyond that. The fact of the matter is, is that he cannot lie. God only conveys truth. God is unable to lie even if what he has spoken did not previously exist. If you look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, it says, And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Before it even came into existence, when God spoke it, then it came into being. Amen. So when it comes to reality, and we have a lot of so-called reality shows on television these days. When it comes to reality, the Bible is the final authority on reality, on what is real. If you want to know what is really real, then read the Bible, because it only contains truth. God's word goes beyond what we can currently see. This is why we're admonished to walk by faith and not by sight, simply because the things that we see can oftentimes lead us astray. It can take us to places that we really don't want to wind up in just, by, just because of our sight. Amen. Uh, that's why it says to us, don't lean on what we know. What we know is limited. Our understanding is very limited. But instead, lean on what God knows and on what he says, which is eternal. And always remember this, God cannot lie. One of the reasons why God cannot lie is because it goes against who God is. If you read in Numbers 23, verse 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has God said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Anything that God says, it's true. Anything that God speaks, it will come to pass. So this is why we are stand on the word of God. It is our anchor and it's what holds us up and it is what gives us the faith we need to overcome any and every obstacle, any situation, any circumstance that would come our way. Personally, I've had promises made to me and, and, and I'm sure that you have had promises made to you uh, by people who had good intentions. Uh, but in the final analysis at the end of the day, they never really kept their word. And, you know, if you're anything like me, it's, it's very disappointing and it's very hurtful to say the least. And, and, and if you're not careful, it can almost make you resentful of the person. 
But I want to let you know something today. You will never have that problem with God. When God speaks his word, his word comes to pass. When he, when he speaks a word, it will happen because God cannot lie. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, it says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. And the fact that, that God has given us his infallible word, it makes the basis of our relationship with him secure. Praise God. I want you to be secure in not only what God can do, but I also want you to be secure in what God cannot do. Because if he says he can supply your need, then it cannot be otherwise. The word is validated in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, that says, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's something to rejoice about. And listen, if he says that he will protect you from hurt, harm, and danger, from sickness, from disease, from illness, from affliction, if he will protect you from your enemies, if he said it, it cannot be otherwise. In Psalm 138, verse 7, David declares, though I walk in the midst of trouble, and we live in a troubled world, everywhere you go, there's trouble. Everywhere you go, there's turmoil. There's fighting, there's killing, there's, there's all kinds of things going. David declared, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because the Lord is with me. It goes on to say that he will revive me. He will stretch forth his hand against the wrath of my enemies and his right hand shall save me. I've had many times when I've gone up against enemies in my life, both spiritual as well as natural. And I've prayed the prayer that David oftentimes prayed. I've prayed and said, Lord, don't let my enemies triumph over me. And every time I prayed that prayer, because of his word and because God cannot lie, I've always received the victory at the hand of the Lord because of his word. Amen. If he says that he will forgive you because there's somebody out there that feels like you've done too much for God to overlook. You've done too much for God to, to forgive and, and, and to reinstate you. If God says he will forgive you, then it cannot be otherwise. In Psalm 86 and 5, it tells us, For thou, Lord, art good. And watch this. It says, and ready to forgive. God is just waiting for you to come back. He says in his word, if you will confess your sins, he will be faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Don't sit back and allow the devil to lie to you and tell you that God doesn't love you and that he won't forgive you. Come back to the Lord because he's good and he's ready to forgive. Not only that, but he's plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon him. You know, if, if God says he will deliver you, then he can't be otherwise. I don't know about you, but in my lifetime in knowing the Lord, I've come to know him as a deliverer. He has delivered me from many things. He's delivered me from, from traps, snares. He's delivered me from the lies and the accusations of my enemies. He's delivered me from sickness. He's delivered me from, from so many things. And it's all because of what his word says. If God says he will deliver, then it cannot be otherwise. In Psalm 34, verse 17, it says, When the righteous cry, the Lord hears the righteous. And not only does he hear the righteous, but he delivers them out of all their troubles. There's another scripture that says that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. I thank God that he's always present with me through the good times and the bad times. He's always there to fulfill his word. 
And I just want to close with this because I feel that this, this is something that is very much needed in the body of Christ. If he says he will heal you, and he says that in his word, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. If he says he will heal you, then it cannot be otherwise. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 says this. It says, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. God wants to do a complete work. God doesn't want to just minister to the physical man, but he wants to minister also to the spiritual man. I believe that there's somebody out there that's going through a, a physical dilemma in their bodies. You went to the doctor and the doctor's given you some bad news and he's told you some things that you weren't really expecting to hear. Well, doctors, I love doctors. I was going to school to become a doctor at one time and the Lord changed my direction because he let me know that he was the great physician and that if I go to him, he would heal me, he would deliver me, he would help me and he would cure me of whatever ailed me. And he has on many occasions. I recall one time when I was sick I was laying on my bed. I, I could hardly breathe. I couldn't move. I couldn't get out of the bed. And I couldn't go anywhere. And I read the scripture that said, call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And so instead of calling the elders, I just took my own hand and laid it on myself. And I prayed and I asked the Lord to heal me. And instantly, instantaneously, God just healed me and took the sickness away. So I know from experience that God is a healer. I wanna pray with someone today. I wanna to pray with you that God will intervene and intercede on your behalf to heal you of whatever condition, whatever situation that you're going through, whether it be physical, whether it be financial, whether you're having marital issues. God is a healer in all aspects. So bow your heads with me and let us pray. Father God, we thank you that we can come to you boldly to obtain grace to help in a time of need. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your presence here right now. And I pray, God, knowing that you in your omnipresence, there is no distance between prayer. We can pray in the studio and you can reach out and you can touch those that are in their homes listening to this broadcast today. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance today in the name of Jesus. Father, go before your people and make every crooked place straight. Father God, I pray that you'll increase their faith through the hearing of your word. God, that they will trust you with all their heart and lean not to their own understanding, but in all their ways, God, that they will acknowledge you and you will, as you promised, because you cannot lie, you will direct their path. Father, we thank you in advance. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the answer to prayer. Do what you have promised to do in the lives of your people. Let them know that God is real and that God still hears and answers the prayers of his people. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Well, God bless you. That's the end of our program for today. We have a book coming out in the near future uh, entitled The Power of a Made-Up Mind. It's gonna be a blessing to you. We're gonna get it out shortly. But in the meantime, continue to pray for the doers of the word broadcast. Continue to pray that we continue on in this vein so that God can continue to use us to reach the masses with the word of God. We love you. We believe God's best for you. And hope to see you again on next time. God bless.